may be one of the hardest parts of a wavy hair care routine is working out how to protect your waves at night. Google it and you'll find loads of suggestions on how to protect your waves and curls at night. I have tried most of them and today I want to share with you the two methods that I find most reliable and most suitable for my type 2B wavy hair. I'll also share with you two key really important tips and as an extra bonus my nighttime hair oiling routine for healthy scalp and hair protection. Right we've got loads to cover so let's get out of bed. Before we jump into the methods let me just share with you my two key top tips. The first one is never ever go to bed with wet or damp hair. Early on in my wavy hair journey, I did this and the results were not good. As well as kinky crazy waves going off in all directions, I ended up with a ton of frizz, mats and tangles. Wet hair is much more vulnerable to damage. The structure of the hair changes when it gets wet. So by going to bed with wet hair, you can actually be damaging your locks. So definitely make sure your waves are completely dry before going to sleep. And my second tip is to swap out current cotton pillowcases for satin or silk. The satin fabric will make sure that you have a lot less friction while you're sleeping. So as you're moving around at night, your hair can kind of rub against your pillowcase and that will cause friction, which potentially can cause frizz. So if you have a lovely soft, silky satin pillowcase, this will massively reduce the amount of friction caused. I've chosen to use satin pillowcases, they're a little bit more budget friendly um, and I'll include a link to the ones that I use, I think it was a pack of two from Amazon, were relatively inexpensive but there are tons and tons of options out there. But it's definitely a top tip for healthy hair, no matter to be honest where you're straight, wavy, kinky or curly. I really feel like I've got some big volume in my hair today. Um, I'm working on a video about um, volume hair hacks for wavy hair and um, yeah I did a few different things today and usually I'm more of a like loose speechy wave but I'm kind of loving this look. So those are my two major tips satin or silk pillowcase and always always have dry hair before you get into bed. Now let's talk about the two methods that I like to use uh, to protect my waves at night time. The first method I use is actually what I do on wash day. So for example, I washed my hair this morning and tonight this is the method that I would actually use and all you'll need is a satin scarf. Okay, so this first method I would use on a wash day, um, which happened to be today. So this morning, wash my hair, fresh waves and curls. Um, this is what I would do tonight to protect those waves and that is to use a satin scarf. This one is from H&M. Now, months and months and months ago, probably over seven or eight months ago now, when I first started um, embracing my waves, one of the things I went to Google for was what to do at night time because I kept waking up with either squished on one side or, you know, crazy waves going off in another and um, looking at different scarf methods was one of the things that I did. Loads, <laughs> of different techniques to actually wrap your hair at night. Um, but I found so many of them didn't work for my hair because the satin scarf, scarf, the satin scarf, scarf, oh my goodness, the satin scarf would just fall out at night. So I'm using a satin pillowcase and I don't know if it's just all too slippery or just because my hair is quite soft. Um, but most of the techniques that I tried in terms of tying didn't work. Um, but this one does, this has never fallen out, but I cannot remember who the original person was that I found this from. I think it might be the lady that did the viral bowl method. Her name's Sophie. She's got gorgeous, long, dark hair. I feel like it came from her, but I can't guarantee. Um, but I'm also not sure I'm still doing it 100% like she did, but basically what I do is take it and create like a Superman cape, just because. Um, and because I don't want, I, I know it sounds weird, I know lots of people would want this, but I don't want huge, huge volume up here. I quite like a slightly flatter top. So one of the reasons I use the scarf on the first night is I already feel like I've got all the volume I want. 
um, particularly today because I am actually working on a video about creating more volume and texture and so on for the days that I do want that look. Um, so I feel like my hair is quite voluminous today, so I don't want to add volume, which is why I use the satin scarf method. So I tie it around my neck like it's going to be a cape. And then I actually pull this up here. So it's sitting not too tight, just kind of gently. So the little tie is up there. And then I pull these two ends and I sort of lift the curls. And then I just, oh, can you see? All the hair's sort of sitting back as if it's almost like lying down. And then I twist this front section and then I just tie it. Hopefully you can see at the back, like that. There we go. And then I might just adjust this here and that is it. So it's almost like creating a little bit of a bonnet but one of the problems I had with the silk bonnet was it was gone. Um, I feel like it probably didn't even stay on my head 15 minutes after I'd fallen asleep. Um, but because this is tied, you can kind of adjust how tight. Um, but everything sits really nice and flat here, which is what I personally want. And it helps with sort of the, the halo frizz. So it really helps with the frizz I get around here. And then the waves sit really beautifully, kind of like soft, just in this bulk here. So that is method one, wash day. This is how I protect my waves. And in the morning, you quite literally, gently, you have to be gentle, undo, and then just let that drape. And then I would just pull this down and undo my super cape. And then give my hair a shake. And I usually straight away put my fingers through, a bit like when you scrunch out the crunch. And then, I would not do anything at all um, and let it settle for a good 20 minutes before deciding whether or not it needs any kind of refresh. So that is wash day method. Method two, all you will need is a satin scrunchie. I've got a real pink theme going on today. Uh, I don't know what that was. Um, so yeah, satin scrunchie, even easier. You're just going to do a very gentle high ponytail. Now, one of the reasons I do love this is by day two, I have definitely lost some of the volume that I've got on wash day, which is out here. And so the reason I then swap to using the ponytail method is because it helps get that volume back. So what I would do, or well, I hope you guys can see this, um, is let all my hair gently tip forward. I'm just going to tilt this down so you can see like that and then I would gather it at the top of my head and tie oh tilt back it's technical job done um, which is another major reason that I love this it's so easy to do. I always pull it out at the front a bit so nothing's too squished here. Just make sure it's nice and loose. And that's it. It's so simple. So you get into bed, you um, are using your satin pillowcase. So there's just no friction. Any of this is just gonna sit on the satin pillowcase. So I feel like I'm really at a weird angle now. Um, and yeah job done now as my hair is getting longer this is what i have found recently is i do have this desire to do something with this so i think what i might start to do um is get one of those teeny tiny claw grips and maybe just pull this around and then pin that in place what i won't do again which i did do once was tuck the ends in to the satin scrunchie here but of course then in the morning i don't know about you but my wavy hair, it will kink so easily. Like if I blow dry my hair straight, which I do sometimes, and then tuck it behind my ears for too long, I will get, it's actually not horrible, but you will get like a, or I'll get a kink where I've tucked it behind my ears or like if I use sunglasses or something. Um, but I wonder if the claw grip might work better. But then what I would do in the morning is again, just be gentle when you take it out. You don't just yank it or pull it out. 
and then just let your hair fall give it a shake and a zhuzh oh hello um and then again i would just let it settle for a good 20 minutes um so yeah all you need is a satin scrunchie on your satin pillowcase job done um, and I definitely find that by using the ponytail method, it will have a lovely amount of volume back to the hair. And then I will just continue to do that until my next wash day. So those are my two tried methods. I never have problems with the satin scrunchie falling out. Um, obviously you can adjust it depending on how thick your hair is. So if you have got really super thick hair, you're just gonna go around once with this. For me, I've got sort of medium to thinner hair. I typically go around twice um but obviously if you've got super fine hair you can just adjust according to the scrunchie that you're using so yeah i hope that works for you guys let me know how you get on if you try either of these methods in the comments below and finally as promised here's my bonus nighttime routine for how i oil my hair i only do this routine the night before i'm going to wash my hair Okay, so when I'm due to wash my hair, I'll actually do a complete oiling routine and I use a couple of different options depending on where I'm placing the oil in my hair. So at the roots, oh, firstly, um, this is, it's Friday, I wash my hair on Monday. Um, so I don't get particularly greasy, but it just does get very strange looking kinks and waves. Although I don't hate it, you know, um, it's been up in a bun. Kind of like this, uh, which is why it has got that kind of kink pattern, technical term. Anyway, yeah, so I'm gonna wash my hair tomorrow. Um, and so, although it is actually mid afternoon, if I don't film now in an hour or so, it'll be dark and you guys won't be able to see what I'm doing. Um, so I thought I would show how I oil my hair when I'm going to wash it the next day. Now, I don't like to be controversial, but one of the first things I will use is this uh, coconut oil. Is it showing up? Is it just trying to see my face? Um, from OGX. And the reason it's controversial is there are people that uh, have got wavy hair or curly hair that say applying a coconut oil will stop moisture getting into your hair. Um, but for me, particularly where at the ends, I've got a lot more bleach, a lot more colour treatment, and then probably from about here downwards, there is still heat damage and over brushing and over styling. I personally find that applying this to my hair before I wash just really helps protect what's already quite fragile hair. Um, so I will continue to do that. It has got silicones. It's not curly girl, wavy girl approved, but I don't follow either of those methods. I'm quite happy to use some silicones, particularly because I do clarifying washes and I can tell if my hair's got product buildup. And also not all silicones made equal and some of them are water soluble. And for me, it's a way up of like protecting the hair from damage versus um, having a little bit of product buildup. So yeah. To oil, I would apply this. Um, so good, decent amount in between my hands, give it a rub, emulsify the product. And then I literally start with the mid to ends of my hair. So normally I don't brush, oh you see, I haven't brushed or done anything to my hair for ages. And that's just normal hair loss because you lose 50 to 100 strands a day. So that's literally just come out. Um, and I actually find there's quite a lot of benefits to doing this. It really helps um, my hair. My hair is definitely high porosity, um, perhaps not so much anymore at the roots, um, but particularly towards sort of the ends, even the mid lengths. And then like you can see, there's a sort of band through here where the colour changes. And I just think when you have colour through your hair, it, you know, is more likely to be high porosity and have a little bit more damage, have slightly more lifted cuticles, that kind of thing. And I just really, really like this coconut oil for protecting against any wash day damage. So obviously I would normally do this just before sort of getting into bed. But once, I mean, already, my hair having felt a little bit 
not rough, but just kind of like, oh, you know, it's been up in a bun for two days running and stuff. Um, it's given my hair a nice amount of slip. So now I would just go through and brush the ends. And just on this side, actually, I can feel I need a little bit more. that in and I actually find it really moisturizes my hair it leaves my hair feel really yeah just and I'm sure lots of people will be watching it going well it's just the silicones it's just temporary but so that's how I deal with the ends um what I would actually do now is go in with the rosemary mint scalp hair oil like um it's one of those products that went kind of viral on tiktok and now funny enough i was actually using this for my eyebrows and then um one of my subscribers i think mentioned using rosemary oil on their scalp for scalp health so i have started doing that and i would literally kind of i mean i'm not going to show I do it all the way through my hair but just kind of like section oh I need a new one um and I focus particularly underneath because this is where my hair is thinner I don't find it the easiest thing to apply but what I kind of do I don't I'll see if I can show is sort of almost like find a channel in the hair so or say here, where I've actually sectioned, so like that. And then I take the dropper and squeeze along the line and then just sort of rub it in. And this will make your hair greasy, because it's oil. So obviously then you're gonna to start to look like you've got quite oily looks. And I would just, Give myself a nice head massage, scalp massage. Um, and again, then I would just very gently, when you've got wavy hair, you really, really want to brush ever so gently so you're not doing any damage. And you can see it's not because the brush is just gliding through. I'm sorry if you could hear my tummy then it was rumbling. It's not hungry, it's digesting. So then I would literally gently brush it back. And then just loose ponytail if I was getting into bed with my satin scrunchie, very loose, make sure nothing's pulling. And that is how I would go to bed. And so that would be my oiling routine before I go to sleep. I really hope that these methods work as well for you as they have for me. They're nice and simple to do, and I do find that they stay in place at night time. Let me know down in the comments how you get on um, if you try either of these out or if you have any alternatives that you think are even better, um, please let me know your recommendations. I think one final thing that is worth remembering is no matter whether you have straight, wavy, curly, kinky, coily, long, short hair, all of us will need some kind of intervention in the morning. It's not realistic to spring out of bed and expect your hair to look exactly the same as when you went to sleep. But before grabbing the refresh tools, I do think it's worth letting your hair settle for a good 15 minutes. I've found that on days where I've got plenty of time, 
um, actually just allowing the kinks and curls to sort of sort themselves out and relax. I end up with my hair looking much, much better than when I first took it out of the ponytail. And what I thought I might need to kind of do in terms of refreshing actually wasn't necessary. So um, yeah, always give your waves and curls a chance just to settle before you go in with those refresh products. I'll leave links in the description box below to the products that I've mentioned as part of my wavy hair nighttime routine. And if you're still looking either for a wash day routine or a clarifying wash, I've got videos covering how I do both of those routines and I'll link them here for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, I'd love it if you'd let YouTube know by giving that thumbs up a click and subscribe to the channel if wavy hair care, beauty and skin are things that you're into. Thanks again for your support, take care and I'll see you soon, bye!